Uh, good morning. Uh, after that wonderful introduction to Tabla, uh, I think my work would be a little more easier now. Uh, so what I'll be discussing today would be a beat tracking approach to uh, rhythm description in Indian classical music. So if that sounds too general, uh, what I would be mainly discussing is are some preliminary experiments of automatic rhythmic analysis that we did uh, with Indian classical music per se. Uh, when I say rhythm description here, uh, what we did was mainly to describe some of the global rhythm parameters such as uh, to get the avartanam period or to get the subbeat structure uh, which actually are not particularly global rhythm descriptors in a piece. They could change through the piece but uh, they can be mostly taken to be constant over the entire song at least. So, and the other aim of this work is to actually see if the state of the art in uh, rhythm description of, of Western music, how, how, how can it actually generalize to Indian music and then see if, if there are specific challenges which we can identify when we apply those techniques to uh, Indian music. So, some of the typical applications would be uh, typically rhythm metadata data generation. We usually have the Tala metadata with the piece, but then uh, we can always verify it. And uh, if we want to do a rhythm-based segmentation, this would be a starting point. And other MIR tasks such as phrase modeling and uh, automatic rhythmic accompaniment, which is, I would say, uh, something which is uh, pretty new. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, uh, not even close to any, anything being practical. Uh, those are the some of the applications which we might be actually looking at. Uh, as we know, uh, rhythm in Indian classical music is hierarchical. As she said, uh, we have an avart, then we have a vibhag, which actually correspond to an avartanam and an different angas in Carnatic music. And uh, beyond that, even within a vibhag, we have the matras which define it, which would mean that we have a, a structure at multiple different levels. And most of the approaches do not consider this. And then, uh, so this is one approach in which we consider this structure at two different levels, at least at the cycle level and at the beat level, I have so to say, which is at the measuring the matras. And uh, so as such, tala is an abstraction, and it's just a label given to a particular kind of structure. And this particular label as such is not present in the audio signal. It's just perceived. So what we see though is in audio signals are just the multi-scale periodicities at different levels that we see. And this is the aim of the work to actually get this particular uh, multi-scale periodicity which we see in the audio signal. Uh, and we know that Indian music doesn't have an absolute tempo which is defined, but still as we see we can have a perceived tempo in terms of it being uh, slow, medium, or fast, and even actually we can even quantify it, though it may not have a particular uh, significance in the performance context, we can still quantify it and then uh, for, uh, for purposes, I mean for our technical purposes. Uh, so I would say a basic description of rhythm would be to get the perceived tempo, a beat, and the long term hour level periodicity, and a subbeat structure, which is probably a nade uh, in Carnatic music. So. Uh, what our approach is to not assign a tala label to a song, but to get the inherent periodicity which we see. And to instead of actually assigning one periodicity, we try to estimate it over a set of uh, periodicity candidates and see which of them give us a better uh, score, so to say, which I'll describe shortly. And so what we do here is to do an onset detection, typically, which is the uh, starting point for most of the pulse analysis. Uh, methodologies and when we do a relative tempo estimation and a beat tracking this is the starting point for our algorithm then we actually move one step ahead and say are there any similarity between the beats in the song and then we construct a beat similarity matrix this is also very well known in the literature that and the structure in the beat similarity matrix gives us the long term uh, cyclical structure which is present in the song apart from this to actually zoom into the uh, matra level and then see what is the subbeat structure, we go uh, to the subbeat uh, level and then we actually plot what's called the inter-onset interval histogram which measures uh, onset time between onsets and then plots a histogram over the time and then the structure in IOI histogram would actually indicate to us the subbeat structure. Uh, so this is a broad system level diagram of the entire system wherein uh, from the audio, 
we have a detection function which actually is used to get the onsets, and then we use a spectrogram to <clears throat> from the detection function we will we'll do a tempo tracking and a beat tracking to get the beat locations. Then we chop off the audio signal at the I mean chop off the spectrogram at those beat locations to actually calculate a beat similarity matrix. And uh, so the beat similarity matrix is further processed along its diagonals, which indicate periodicity to uh, and we test the hypothesis of different cycle periods using a comb filter bank. A comb filter bank essentially averages out all the periods which are a multiple of a particular value and then it emphasizes periodicities at a particular uh, period and then it gives us a rank ordered set of candidates. On the other side, we have an onset detector here and with which we plot an IOI histogram which is the inter onset interval histogram, which can further be used to uh, test a hypothesis on the subbeat structure candidates and uh, they are rank ordered again. So some of the algorithms which can be used are for uh, onset detection uh, and for tempo induction and beat location tracking. We, we have, these are pretty state of the art methodologies for Western music as such and they have been uh, modified a little to actually suit our uh, needs here. So this is an example of detected onsets here. Uh, this, the, the, the blue lines which you see is the detection function. It's halfway rectified and then uh, there's a lot of pre-processing done on that. Uh, whereas the red stars which you see are the onsets detected on a particular uh, song. And what you see here uh, in the second panel here is the onset interval histogram which I was des describing. Uh, when I say DF samples, it's the frame length which is about 23.4 milliseconds here. And uh, when we see a peak in this onset histogram, we, it means that there are a whole bunch of onsets wh whose durations actually vary by, if I say, if I, see a uh, if I see an onset at, say, 500, at 500 DFs, which is 500 into 23.4 milliseconds, I have a periodicity uh, and then the, the count of those particular onsets. So though I have plotted it over 2,500, we would just need to look at the initial few samples to get the most of the subbeat structure. Uh, so this is a tempo track, I would say, uh, which is got from the function which, which we saw here, the onset uh, detection function. And we use an autocorrelation based method to actually get the tempo. And uh, it's weighted, so we can see tempo lines here. And since there are, there are multiple tempos which can be perceived in a song, uh, it shows it at different levels. And based on the upper, uh, upon our, uh, the weighting function which we use, we can see that uh, we'll choose a particular tempo, which is the maximum here. And this weighting function decides what metrical level is actually chosen for, the, uh, for tracking the beats in the particular song. So once we have the tempo track, we'll obtain a single tempo value for the song, and then this could be very easily changed to actually account for a variable tempo by doing a dynamic programming kind of a trace through the entire tempo track. Uh, so from this, uh, from once we have a tempo track, then we do a beat tracking on that uh, using uh, a dynamic programming approach, which actually takes a cost function of continuity, and then it, it actually uh, this allows any kind of beats which are totally out of the continuous pulse which we see and also on the onset strengths and then it, it does a beat tracking which is what was proposed by Ellis and uh, once we have the beats uh, we chop off the signal spectrogram at the beat locations and then we compute what's called a beat similarity matrix which is in a way take a particular beat and then see how similar it is with all the other beats of the song and then uh, plot it here. So in a, in a way, uh, each pixel here, each dot in this image actually indicates the x beat and the y beat, uh, how correlated they are. So in a way, the structure along the diagonals of this particular matrix indicate the, the structure of the periodicity. See, we can see a line here. This is 0, which would each beat is, of course, correlated with itself. And this is the other structure which we see which clearly shows that there is some periodicity here. And we can, I mean, there's a lot which can be inferred from the beat similarity matrix, uh, but here we just are doing the diagonal processing. Uh, so 
if I add up all the diagonals and then actually plot it, this is this is what comes out of it. Uh, we can see a, a, we can see peaks at different values here, and then this is perhaps the strongest peak. But then uh, we need to actually look at multiple periodicities to actually this directly gives us a peak, but then it's not so obvious in most of the cases. Uh, so that's why we, what we do is to use this. Uh, I mean, this formulation, so it might look a little uh, tricky, though, but then it's, it's just a comb filter. It just has a set of periodicity candidates, and then which you multiply with the uh, spectrum and then add them up. It, it, in a way, picks up, if I have one a periodicity of 4, it picks up the values at 4, 8, 6, 12, and 16, adds them up, and then takes an average, and then gives it back to me. And for each of the periodicity candidates over, uh, I mean, P1 to uh, whatever periodicity we are looking at. And then this is what is looking at the subbeat structure. So we'll go back to the original histogram which we saw. And we take the tempo period, and then we go and then zoom into the tempo period by a factor of Q. And uh, when we are actually looking at, so if we are looking at a subbeat structure of 3, we would look at every one third of tempo period and then see if there is there's a structure there, uh, or just uh, it's, it's just like that. So here I have a particular periodicity uh, candidate hypothesis tested over different periodicities here, and uh, P actually is the long term cycle periodicity we are looking at, uh, whereas. Q is the subbeat structure we are looking at. I'll just play this example for you. It's, it's just a, it's a semi-classical, I would say. It, it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it's Ambiga, Naninna Nambide by Purandar Dasa. It's, it's just played in a semi-classical fashion here. So it has a, a, a subbeat structure of three. It's, a, it's in Tishra, actually, Tishra Nade. And uh, so if I actually plot the b track version of that, so uh, it, it is actually, I would actually track it at half the speed, but then it's, it's tracking it at a little lower. So that's why we see a periodicity at the subbit structure at 3. And a long-term periodicity can be seen at multiple levels, actually, uh, 4, 8, and 12, and 16, whereas the peak is at 16 because the BSM had a peak at 16. So, so this is the graph we use for all our uh, analysis. And then instead of actually saying the, uh, the identified periodicity is 3, we actually cal calculate what's called an, a confidence score which is the at the periodicity we are looking at, uh, we calculate the value of the function which we saw previously, and then subtract it by the minimum and divide it by the range. So this actually gives us, if we have the annotated periodicity present, it would give us a confidence code of 1. And if it's not present, it, it would vary between 1 and 0, instead of actually making it an exact value. And then, uh, I mean, instead of a recognition task, we make it a, a range over uh, 0 to 1. And since we have metrical level ambiguity, which is present in uh, any rhythm, detect, rhythm description algorithms, uh, the accuracy is computed at what's called uh, annotated metrical level and the allowed metrical level. So to explain this, annotated metrical level is what a musician would say, this is actually Tishanade Aditara. So th that's the annotated metrical level. Whereas the allowed metrical level could also be a Tishra double speed and an Aditala, which is counted as 4, or an Aditala counted as 16. So all the allowed metrical levels, which are pretty, pretty much multiples of uh, the annotated uh, metrical level. And uh, so this way, we, we can actually check accuracies at the, the musician annotated level and uh, all the other allowed levels, and then see if, if it can find it at the musician level and at the periodicity level, which is present in the signal. So the data set we, we use for this is uh, a small little data set which we collected and then annotated manually using uh, three or four uh, people in our lab. And uh, I mean, most of the data was provided by Hema Madam. Thanks, thanks for that. And uh, uh, it, there is also, I also collected a few uh, light classical music uh, songs, which are almost semi-classical. 
and then uh, we just wanted to see the performance and then compare it with them. Most of them are manually annotated, and uh, so if the Tala metadata was available with the song, that was actually used. <coughs> so uh, this, is, this actually shows some of the results which we got. At the correct metrical level accuracy, uh, because of errors in B tracking, uh, we don't see too much of uh, a very good accuracy at all. But what is interesting would be to look at it at the allowed metrical levels, in which uh, uh, finding the nade of the song was uh, was a, I mean gave us about a 70% accuracy on Carnatic Music Database, whereas it was about 80% on the Light Classical Music Database. Uh, whereas finding out the Tara cycle period itself, it was a pretty hard task for the entire uh, signal. Uh, I mean, so one of the main reasons for that is the precise nature of the vibhaks, and without actually taking care of the the sub tala structure, so to say, at, at the vibhag level, if we directly go into the long sex structure, uh, we may not exactly be able to find that. For example, I mean, if we take say kantachapu or uh, a tal which has a division of two, three, two, three. We would see a periodicity at 2 and at 3, but then we may not see a periodicity at 5, because if, if it's not accented, and the periodicity is at 2 and 3 might actually overshadow the periodicity at 5, and we might get a lower score for uh, a periodicity at 5. So I so since this actually looked at only kind of uh, two levels of uh, rhythmic structure, uh, we see this kind of an ambiguity. One, one important thing which, which I learned only during this workshop was to actually even consider the vibhag level uh, structure. And uh, so Carnatic music, the performance was poorer because there was there are a lot of kala changes with when the composition goes really fast, in which case the onsets detection and the beat tracking gets confused. And then uh, that is how uh, the performance goes poorer. And then on the odd meter talas, the performance was uh, relatively poorer. Uh, so one, one another one thing to be noticed here is that though there is a metrical level ambiguity, it gets, I mean, in a way nullified when we consider both the subbeat structure and the supra beat, I mean, the long term periodicity in, in the sense of uh, a 3 and a 16 could also be detected as 6 and a 8, and then they would actually correspond to the same thing, but they've, they've been just tracked at multiple metrical levels. And both of them together can be used for uh, getting the, uh, the required metadata which we want. And uh, if we want to assign Tala labels as such for use in uh, a browser, say a music browser, we we'll need it needs further information, and then we need some knowledge-based uh, processing further, based on uh, whatever uh, we get out of this. So uh, an immediate improvement could be in the choice of audio regions, wherein uh, we can choose regions in which uh, Tala is more apparent, and then use those. One way of knowing that would be to check the local variance and then see if the onsets have too much of variance. If they have too much of variance, we, we could ignore that those regions and then consider only regions which had uh, less variance. And uh, metrical level ambiguity, we need a better tempo weighting function. And then some sup semi-supervised approaches would actually reduce metrical level ambiguities. So if you're if looking ahead, uh, so estimation of sub tala structure at the vibhag level so which would mean a sub-beat, vibhag level, and a talal cycle, avat level structure, that's a better way of approaching the problem of rhythm description, I would say. And uh, we need to create a Teka database, which might be very useful if you want to do uh, rhythm description and uh, phrase modeling together. And so we'll also need to finally revisit the whole uh, concept of beat tracking for Indian art moving music and see if it has any con contextual uh, importance as such. Uh, I have a few examples, but I, since we know, I've played this in the workshop, so I'll not play it again. Uh, and uh, I'll, I would like to thank Hema, Madam, to, uh, for actually giving us th this data. And these are some of the references. And uh, I mean, this lists pretty much all the uh, new papers in B-tracking. And then we could go through it in detail. And thank you. I'll take any questions.